So, I think the question on everybody's mind is, what's Amy going to do with all that produce from the dumpster? Well, I'm going to show you. This isn't produce. These are the biscuits that are about to go into the oven that I'm baking for breakfast. But also in the oven right now is a spaghetti squash. I didn't think filming cutting up the spaghetti squash would be all that interesting, so I didn't film it. But I should have, because then you could have seen me almost eviscerate myself with this knife. You've seen me bake these biscuits before. These are the ones I do with the whey from the yogurt, because I've been making yogurt again. This is going to be an excellent and nutritious fruit salad. Got some pineapple in the bowl, and now we're cutting up some orange. Next, I'm putting in some really nice strawberries. After the last two dumpster dives, Daddy went on a third and brought home these strawberries, but we didn't film that one because he said, oh, there wasn't that much, it wasn't that great. And then I went out and looked at the box he brought, and it was great. It had strawberries, more lettuce, cucumbers, yellow peppers, all sorts of other healthy things. So these strawberries are from the haul that we didn't film. Then we'll put in some blackberries and some raspberries. We have really been working our way through these raspberries and blackberries the past few days, but berries are delicate. You gotta use them up pretty quickly. They go bad quickly. So the ones that don't get used in this fruit salad are gonna get frozen to become smoothies or delightful frozen yogurt. Now I've got 10 mangoes to deal with, so I'm going to peel them all, cut them up, and the chunks that are nice and firm and perfectly ripe are going to go in the fruit salad, and the ones that are overly ripe and messy and pulpy, and you know how mangoes get when they're too soft, I will freeze those. All right, here goes the mango. I still have four more to cut up. And this is the mango that's going in the freezer. I have it on the lid of a big, big, big ice cream bucket. Once those are frozen, I'll break them all up and then put them in a baggie. Now here are some blackberries I froze yesterday and they are ready to go in a baggie and now a new layer of berries can freeze on this little plate. Now they're all individually frozen and ready to use. Last but not least, we will put in some banana. I always like to make sure the bananas get submerged in the juicy part so that they're not touching the air so much and then they don't go mushy and brown so fast. Now these bananas were also from the dumpster and I think we got them when they were still green and that's what they look like now which looks like they might be bruised and so forth. But they're not. They're fine inside. And if they were bruised I would just freeze these for smoothies also. Now I'm just going to toss it all around with my hands and I think my biscuits are just about ready to come out of the oven. So that's a nice Saturday morning breakfast, isn't it? Homemade biscuits and a beautiful fresh fruit salad. It's so pretty. I think it needs a few more berries. I also have apples and grapes, but I'm not putting them in the fruit salad because the kids just like to eat those on their own and I put them in their lunch boxes and the apples that aren't really the prettiest to just bite right into are getting dehydrated because that's my favorite snack. Dehydrated apples, I show you. There's the dehydrator going to town. And there are the biscuits fresh from the oven. Now we're moving on to some of these uh, 3,000 avocados we got. Luckily they're not all ripe at the same time, but I have a plate of some chunks of banana I'm going to freeze and I'm going to cut up some avocados and freeze chunks of those because those will go in smoothies also to add nutrition and creaminess and fabulousness and I am no avocado expert, but here we go. This one actually feels pretty soft. Look how perfect the dumpster avocado is! Oh. Now this is how the clever people get the pit out. Let's see if I don't cut my hand off with my eviscerating knife. Boop! And then you lift it out. Or you twi Ooh! Ooh, you twist it. Ooh, that did work. I don't know if I plan to do that with all the avocados because I want to try to grow an avocado plant. Look how tiny the pit is on that one. That's like a little tiny baby pit. I never saw anything like that. Look at that little tiny pit. I wonder if that will grow a little mini avocado tree. How are you supposed to get the peel off? I'm just going to peel it off. That worked pretty well. Alright, bananas and the first round of avocados going in the freezer. Now moving on to my favorite limes. 
first, I'm going to zest them. There's all our lime zested. That's going to go into a baggie in the freezer. And next, we're going to squeeze all these limes. Some of the lime juice I'm going to use to make lime yogurt. Some I'm going to mix with the carrot juice later when I juice carrots. And some will get frozen in ice cube trays. There's all our lime juice. That was quite a workout for my arms. Now, what to do with all these lime peels? I'm going to put some of them in this little bowl with some water. Pop it in the microwave for a few minutes and let the steamy lime essence coat and clean the inside of the microwave and freshen it and then I will wipe it out. Later, once I've recovered from the limes, the lemons will get the same treatment. And now we're gonna start with juicing eight pounds of carrots. I've lined the container where all the pulp shoots out with a baggie because I wanna save that pulp to make, um, you know, carrot muffins and carrot cake and things like that in the future. And then the juice is going to come shooting and splurting out right here into this bowl. So from eight pounds of carrots, we got this much carrot juice, which is a lot, and this much carrot pulp. So one of the criticisms of juicing is that you waste all of this to get this. But if you scoop out your pulp, into half cup servings and put them in baggies and put it in the freezer and save it, then you're not wasting anything. My favorite combination in juicing is carrot apple juice with a little bit of lime and a little bit of ginger. And I used to buy fresh ginger and juice it back in the day when I used to buy things. I'm not going to buy fresh ginger now, so I would just use some powdered ginger I have in the pantry or I would mix the juice with some diet ginger ale, make it all frothy and bubbly and delicious. I have carrot juice in two ice cube trays. These are going to be frozen. Those could also go in smoothies. And now we're going to do an experiment with this big ass cabbage. All right, here's my plan because I want to make some coleslaw. But my arm is kind of tired from doing all the limes, so I don't really feel like grating all this cabbage right now. So I thought, well, I have the carrot pulp that I could use for the shredded carrot in the coleslaw already. Why don't I run some cabbage through the juicer and see if that will shred up the cabbage for me and also remove some of that liquid because you know how your coleslaw always gets all like runny and watery and liquidy after a couple days? All right, so we're going to give that a go. So I think this is going to be a very finely grated, almost pureed type coleslaw. We will see. And then what to do with the cabbage water that comes out the other end. I'm just thinking throw it in the soup pot as part of the, the broth for the next soup I make. That's what I'm thinking. That's what the shredded cabbage looks like. And that's what the cabbage juice looks like. And I tasted it. it tastes like cabbage. I'm putting this in a soup pot. I wasn't planning on making soup today, but I guess I am. All right, here we go with our coleslaw experiment. I suspect this would be really good for the coleslaw lover who doesn't really have a lot of teeth. So... We'll put some of the cabbage in our bowl. We'll add just a little bit of the carrot pulp. Then put in a little salt. Also put in a little bit of sugar. I already put in Splenda. I'm gonna put in some sweet relish. That was more than I expected. Oh well, came out in a big blob, that's fine. And then we're going to put in some of our dumpster mayonnaise. Oh, yes. So this is dumpster carrot, dumpster cabbage, dumpster mayonnaise, <gasps> store-bought with a coupon, relish, experimental coleslaw. Pretty much, no matter how awful this turns out, it will get eaten, because I will eat it, even if nobody else likes it. I will not let it go to waste. And I've got the cabbage water plus some regular water on the stove warming up. And then I'm going to go concoct a soup out of that. Well, this definitely does have a different kind of texture, I think, because the moisture has been taken out of the carrots and the cabbage. But it's not a bad tasting. And because it's kind of mushy, I'm thinking this would actually be really good as a sandwich, like filling in a pita pocket or just spread on bread because it's kind of 
like a spread almost because it's so mushy. I should make Frugal Daddy come taste this so you can see his reaction, but I'll just... It's pretty bland. It's pretty tasty. You want some, cat? I don't think you do. I think I'm gonna put it in pita bread. That will be good for sandwiches at work this coming week. Weird as it is. Now onto the soup. Now when you juice the carrots, sometimes instead of pulp coming out, you get these kind of shards of carrots. So I'm gonna throw those into the soup pot. Gonna put in some Noor chicken bouillon powder. Although I'm sure cabbage water would just be delightful on its own. All right, we're gonna break into the organic barley. As you may recall from a previous grocery haul, I got this for free due to the overage from coupons. I love barley. I have some yellow pepper left from a salad, so we'll cut some of that up and put it in. I'm gonna put some leftover corn in. Well, that is kind of a weird combination. I have some really nice broccoli and cauliflower. I've got Brussels sprouts. I have a whole bunch of other kinds of vegetables, but I don't really want to throw them into the weirdo soup because I have some leftover rice and I want to use some of the vegetables with the rice to make Chinese fried rice and I also want to make a vegetarian casserole. So I don't really want to throw the best of the veg into this pot and I don't want to add potatoes because I've already got the barley. I think we're basically going for kind of a barley vegetarian soup here. And back to the carrot pulp. I measured out half a cup into each baggie. Instead of labeling each baggie individually, I am putting them all together in a big baggie with a post-it note that says half cup of carrot pulp. You wouldn't think I would ever forget what these are, but believe me, I could. And there's still more left over. I think I'm going to use this to make my Thai carrot peanut soup with a coconut milk. That video did not get a ton of views, but I have to tell you, that is one of the best things I ever cooked. That soup is amazing. I might put a link to that below because you all should try that soup. Now my cabbage water soup is doing pretty well. I added a little lime juice to that and it's actually pretty good. Ooh, you know what else that carrot pulp would be really good in? Or even the, the cabbage pulp coleslaw? Tuna salad. The fluffiness of it kind of has the same texture as tuna salad. You could stretch out your tuna and make it healthier by putting in your carrot pulp. And now for lime yogurt. All right, here's our homemade yogurt, which I started yesterday morning and drained this morning. Here's our lime juice. One thing I think I've consistently forgotten to say in my other videos about making yogurt is you have to remember to save some to start your next batch. It's kind of like with sourdough bread. You have to have the starter, right? So that we're gonna put aside in the fridge or freezer and save for the next time we make yogurt. Now with this yogurt, we will turn it into lime, my favorite flavor. We're gonna put a tiny bit of vanilla in. Plain yogurt is pretty, pretty, pretty tart. And the lime juice, of course, is pretty sour. We're gonna put in some Splenda. You all use the sweetener of your choice, but you know I'm a Splenda gal. And then we'll put in some of this freshly squeezed lime juice. Stir it up without slopping it all over your counter. Mmm. Needs more lime. Mmm. Oh my gosh. It's a little sour, but it's good because that's what lime should be like. Unless you're getting your yogurt free with couponing, which I often do, you really should be making your own yogurt at home. It is so easy and it's so much cheaper, especially if you're into buying Greek yogurt, because you just drain it more and get it thicker and then you got your Greek yogurt. You should be watching my videos on how to make yogurt. You do not need a yogurt machine. You do not need any special equipment whatsoever except possibly a thermometer. Carrot juice, should we try the carrot juice? Let's. All right, this is mostly carrot juice. It's got a little bit of apple and a little bit of lime. It doesn't have any ginger. But it is amazing. I wish I had some diet ginger ale to put with it because that would be so good. That is really, really, 
really amazing. It really doesn't take that much apple or lime to take the weird carrot flavor away. That's delicious. So that's what I'm doing with all the dumpster produce. Freezing, juicing, chopping, cooking, souping, whatever. Um, I have so much to clean up. All right, so I'm gonna try to remember to put some links below to some of the things I mentioned that I said I would, so hopefully I did. If you haven't subscribed yet, click to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, comment below, and share on social media because it's beautiful to share. Bye!